What do you do with something like a gin when you're going to distill the same thing multiple times? When do you make the cuts? Do you make the cuts at one specific point? Do you make the cuts at all points? Does it freaking matter? That's what we're getting into today. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm GC and this is Still It. So, uh, like I said in the intro guys, this is a common question that pops up a lot actually and I'm surprised I haven't made a video on this already. I went back and had a look and I haven't. So uh, thanks for my man over on Patreon. I'm not going to mention your name. I don't know whether you would like me to or not. <laughs> Some people like their privacy. I get that. But thank you for bringing this up to me again and uh, jogging my memory. Let's get stuck in, shall we guys? First of all, let's talk about stripping runs and spirit runs and where you should make cuts when you're doing those two. So a whiskey, hell of vodka, anything. I mean, most things I end up doing uh, multiple stripping runs, you know, maybe three, maybe four, maybe two stripping runs, depending on the size of the stuff I'm doing. Uh, and then doing a spirit run later on. I do not make any cuts at all <laughs> on the stripping runs. And the reason for that is, if I'm making cuts, the reason I'm making cuts is to separate stuff that I want from stuff that I don't want. Uh, and the more precise I can be with that, the better in my book. I get to keep more of the good stuff, whether that be just literally volume of product that I'm trying to keep, or more importantly to me, you know, certain flavors that come through at different times of the, the run. I want to keep lots and lots of that stuff and keep all of the bad stuff out of it. I want to get rid of as much as I can. And once again, whether that comes down to just straight up, you know, headsiness or tailsiness, or whether it is a certain flavor that's coming through as well, which does happen from time to time, I want to be able to get rid of as much as that as I can. So to me, that is a precise operation. It's something that requires a little bit of tact, a little bit of delicacy, a little bit of finesse. And I'll tell you right now guys, those words do not describe a stripping run. Not my kind of stripping run anyway. I literally just run it as hard and fast as I can uh, within the limitations of the power you have, the size of the steel you have, the um, potential for whatever's in there to, to puke or boil over. I'll run it up to that sort of point and I'm not looking at flow rate, I'm not looking at flavor. All I'm doing is trying to cut down the volume or get rid of the goop in there, you know, if, it, if it's a solid goopy wash that I'm distilling. I would much rather keep everything at that point in the stripping run. And then when I move on to the spirit run, when I am gonna employ some finesse and some control and apply those to the situation, uh, I would rather make my cuts then which means I can have more finesse and more control over my cuts as well. Obviously when you're doing a stripping run, you have to decide where you stop, so I guess you could call that a cut. Sure, okay, I make one cut, but no, I'm not taking four shots, I'm not taking heads, I'm not taking tails or anything like that. Before we talk about the gin situation, first of all I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much Patreons. Uh, I really, I, I don't know what to say, man. 2020's gone, 2021 is here, and I'm still not entirely sure how to properly express my thanks to you. But I appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much. All right, uh, gin. So the thing with gin is we do a stripping run or multiple stripping runs. We do a spirit run to create a neutral or a vodka. Uh, and then we're gonna distill the thing again, right? With the botanicals, to infuse it with the botanical flavor. So does that mean we don't have to make cuts on the, the neutral? We can just do it over when we get to the gin? Well, no, <laughs> it doesn't mean that. The first reason is um, more often than not, it works out better to make a large batch of neutral. If you're gonna make neutral, if you're gonna make a vodka, uh, it seems, to me anyway, it makes sense to make a large batch of the stuff. You have it sitting on the shelf and you can uh, proof down a bottle, have it as vodka, you can take out a liter or two and turn it into you know, gin A, and then the next day you can take out another liter or two and turn it into gin B. You can, whatever, make limoncello out of it or something. It's a great tool to just have sitting there. So when I make it, I like to make a larger batch. Because I never quite know what I'm gonna use it for, making great cuts, making quality cuts on that stuff when I produce it, ensures that it's gonna be good for anything I'm gonna use. Makes sense, right? The second reason, is that when it comes to gin, I want to make my cuts based on flavor. And when I say based on flavor, I mean based on the flavors of the botanicals that are coming off the still at any one point in time. 
Uh, every gin I've ever made has had a weird patch at the beginning uh, that is a little bit funky and a little bit odd, not because of the spirit, the base spirit, but because of the botanicals that are coming off right at the beginning. I guess the more vol volatile stuff uh, just it wasn't pleasant to me. Uh, but imagine if you had a whole lot of heads in there and you had, say, 50 mils come off of weird, ginny, essencey stuff that you don't like and you want to get rid of that. But then when you get to 65 mils, the botanical flavor is beautiful. Well, if you've still got nasty heads coming through, then you've got to make your cut based on the nasty head stuff and leave botanical flavor behind. And the same is true when you get down to the tails. Um, you know, perhaps you get down to whatever it is, 40% and uh, the botanical flavor is still tasting quite nice. You're getting some nice earthy stuff coming through from perhaps the, I don't know, the cardamom or whatever it is that you put in there, the licorice root. But you've got this horrible wet dog flavor as well. Well, you can't get that earthy flavor from the cardamom and the licorice root. I'm making that up. <laughs> Maybe that's a thing. Think about the concept here. Uh, well, you can't keep them because you gotta get rid of the wet dog flavor. So I would much rather have a really clean spirit going in that is just gonna get out of the way when it comes to cuts and let me choose the flavors I want in the botanicals at that point in time, which is what Honestly, the gin is all about, right? There you have it, guys. I think I've said my piece on it. I, I think it is quite a simple concept. At the same time, I don't know how long it would have taken me to work this out by myself. Uh, I was lucky. I got it handed to me on a silver platter by someone that knew what they were doing. Um, so, if this video helped you out, which I really hope it did, make sure you give me a thumbs up down in the, uh, the section down below the video that tells YouTube that it's a good video and it should show it to other people. So that would be great. You can also drop a comment down there. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying these videos, hit the subscribe button as well. Keep on chasing the craft and I'll see you next time. See ya!